Um, so our last meeting, we started looking at um, application three, which is the Comsa Alumni Index, um, page 27 of the handout. Okay. So as you can see on the screen, um, this is the application. We introduce, we use the the border layout for the main panel or the main frame panel. And then with the border layout, the Ponsa Alumni Dex was the north part. And we had the username, the rate account as the west. We had already a member of the east. And then we had the south part where you enter the full name and other details. Okay. Now, at the center, we had the ATU logo. Now, the southern part is not visible. Okay, it's not visible. Because if someone is already a member, the person doesn't need to sign up and all that. The person just enters the details and then he or she is able to log in. However, if the person is a new user, the person has to create an account. And in creating that account, it leads you to the form. So a code has been written behind here, which is the create account. And any time you click this particular button, it leads you to the south panel. Okay. So when I click this, automatically the south panel is enabled. And then I can now enter the details, the full name, the region, and so on. Okay, browse. So the browse gives you this window for you to locate whichever image you want to put there, and then you save it. And then after all that, you submit. Okay. So today we are going to look at the code behind the entire interface. I'm going to look at the code behind the interface. I'll just go through the interface quickly to redesign it, to redesign it quickly, and then we can take it up from there. So to create a new project. We are exiting selected. Give it an application name. So, uh, Omsa. Omsa app. Omsa app. So we have our interface now. We go to our SRC folder, create our package. So we name it com dot. Com dot. Now inside the package, we introduce <coughs> create our GUI form, and we name it com dot. Our default layout is the border layout. Our base layout is the border layout. Then we create our form and our class. Now, we inserted an image for the um, What's it called? The ATU logo. Okay. 
we inserted the ATU logo. So let me locate the logo. So what we do is we open the part where the application was created. I created it on my desktop, so this is it. Okay, open the SRC folder. Okay. You can even put it in the SRC folder or the uh, the com folder. Okay. So let me just put it in the SRC folder. So automatically that should appear here. As you can see here, uh, etu.jpg, that's the logo. Now we start with our main panel, which is the frame panel, giving it the field name frame panel and its model layout. Okay. Now we are going to add other panels in terms of the north, the west, the east the south, and then the center. So for each of them, we'll give it a name. So this is the north panel. North panel. We've done this already in class, so uh, I'm just moving fast with it. And we use the flow layout for the north panel. And we, for the west panel, Use the green bar layout for the west panel. Then the east panel used the same green bar layout. Okay. Then we come to the south panel. And the south panel also, we use the green bar layout. And then finally, we have the center panel if we the center panel we use um to maintain the border layout or we can just um Take the center panel out okay, so that we'll just put the image at the center. So we'll put a, a, a logo at the, the logo at the center, the image at the center. So let's start with the north panel. So the north panel, we have the, the label. So we drop our J label there, the north panel, and then we name it our um Let's say Comsa label. Label L E L. And then we'll give it the name Comsa Alumni Text. Like I said, we can change the font. So we go to font, click on the folder. When it opens, we check here. We use the font, let's say Tahoma. Selected the font style, bold italics, the font size, let's say 24. Okay. So once we are done, we have a show here. So that's the north panel. Now let's go to the west. So the west panel, that's where we have the user, uh, the new user. Okay. So with that, we can, we have to use a label. So we introduce our J label, drop the label. And then we add a button. So we add our button. We have a vertical space here, a horizontal space here. We can take it off if you want to. Okay, so I'll name this label 
new user in small letters. So I named the button uh, create. Create account button. So I'll use BTN for button. And then the text we want to see on it is create account. Yeah. And for the label, you put the new user label. And then the text for there will be new user okay. if you look in the handouts the font was made bold okay. so the font style we choose bold and then maybe the font size let's make it 16 and then we can center it <coughs> So the horizontal alignment we use center for that the horizontal alignment and then um I think that'll be it for the west side so let's move to the east so with the east we have about three labels so label to the east we have another label two labels then we have a text field and we have a password field, and then we have a button over right there. A button over there. So over here, we say already a member field. Already member label. So we name the label already member. Then we use the font uh, style, bold, size, we choose 16, just like the new user. Then this label, we can the horizontal spacer out and then put a vertical spacer um, over here, just like this. Or maybe a horizontal spacer rather. Just like we can see with a new user. So we take the next label, that label is username label. Use name LBL for label. And I'll put here username. Okay. Then the next label is a password. So password LBL label. Then for the text, I'll put here password so that it shows on what we have here. Then we come to our button. So our button is the login button. So login BTN. Then the text here will be log login. 
Then we come to our text field. So I'm naming this text field username text field EF. And then the password field is password. Now I'll say password PF, PF password field. Okay. Now with all this, the code is being generated for me. Okay, for all that we've done so far. The variables are being declared. Okay. So we are done with the east. Let's now move to the west part. So for the west, sorry, we are now moving to the south. So for the south, um, we did for just a few of them. Okay, so move to the south. I'll add um, two labels. So one is for signing in. Uh, so full name and then text field. And we can use region. Uh, that's a combo box. Use a combo box. And we introduce another label. Another label, which is for the picture. We use a text field. And then a button to browse. And then we can add a button for submit. So with this, I want to put some horizontal space right here to give it some space. So once I see my blue array, I drop it, I can do two of that, two of the horizontal spaces, sorry, the vertical spaces. And I can put one here, and then I can put a horizontal space right here just to give some space over here too. So let me label this uh, component. So this one will be full name, full name label, LBL. Then you put here full name, say text. Come to the next one. Region. So I'll put here region LBL. And this is the full name text field. So full name CF. Then this is a region combo box. So I'll do it region CV. Okay, please, I'm moving fast because we did this in class last week. Okay, so I'm just doing it all over again. Um, so we can put here picture or image, portrait. So picture, little LDL. Then this will be the picture. picture text field, DF, then we give this the browse button, browse, VTN, then we put here browse, and finally we have the submit button, so submit, VTN, and then here we say, Submit. All right, so with this created, now we can preview and see our interface. So this is a preview of our interface. However, we need to add our logo. Okay, that's the last thing we have to do. Okay, by even that, the text field, we need to specify the length of the, uh, in terms of the column, okay? 
in terms of the column. Um, so let's take the this text field. So we can put here the columns over here. We can put the, of course, we want a full name. So the full name we can put 30 because some people's full names are very long. Then the user name can put a column, let's say uh, 10. The password, we can also make it 10, column of 10. Then over here, we can also make it 20. Let's preview again to see how it looks like. So the preview is giving us something like this. So I think that let's reduce that of the text field to say 20 for the full name. And this, let's make it. And all right, so we need to fit in some values for our um, combo box. So we said we use the model, click on it. Now enter the values. Like I said, the first value, always keep it open. So we can say no region selected. Then subsequently, we can start to populate the region. So we say Ashanti in a particular order, alphabetical, Ahafo, uh, Bono, Then uh, Chada one, let's say Central, Eastern, um, Greater Accra, okay, so we can keep it here. And then the last thing we need to add is our logo, okay, it's our logo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it in between our panels. All right, so I'll place a label in between. That's the center part. Then the label, you are going to name it ATU logo label, LBL. So maybe I can just put here ATU logo. Now, I'll come to icon, it's the browse button, go to where I'll see my logo is there, then I select it. Okay, so we have the logo showing in here. So let me preview again. Okay, the ATU logo is showing here, so I need to just take it off. But this is a preview, so I'll take the text off from here, um, at this, just take it off so that nothing shows. And then preview again. So this is our application. Okay. So we are now going to write the code okay, for the application. First and foremost, we are going to hide the south part, which is this part. Is any question so far? Any question before we go to the main aspect of today's lecture? So please, um, I want you to um, please insert 
Yes, uh, Prince, your hand is up. Please, if you have a question, just raise your hand. Mm -hmm. Prince. Uh, sir, that means the center was the center panel was not created. Yes, it wasn't created, but you can also create it. You can also create it. Okay. So whatever, when we added the label, automatically the label was placed at the center. Okay, it was oh, okay. placed at the center. Yeah. Okay. So you don't necessarily have to create it because we've created for all the other three. And by default, they are left with the center. So you don't necessarily have to create for the center panel too. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some of coffee, your hand is up. Some of, is it? Oh, Hello. Oh, Hello. Yeah, some of, speak up. Hello? Yes. Yes, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, I wanted to know how, I wanted you to uh, put the logo to the project again. I didn't see how you did it. Oh, this time we did it in class. Were you in class last week? Yes, yes, sir. No, not not on the center. This thing, how you put the this in the folder. That's what I want to know. Okay, so the folder in which you have your application. Mm, for instance, in my case, when I yes. created this, the application yes. was on desktop. Okay, so I open the application, go to the SRC folder, open it, and drop the image in there. You get it now? Okay, sir. Yes, sir. So Thank you. Once I drop it in there, anytime I come to browse an icon, I can always see it in the SLC folder. Select it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. You're welcome. Um, Evergreen, your hand is up. Uh, uh, also, please, uh, please, I wanted you to insert the logo again, but I, I think you've explained it through um some more questions. Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, so let's go Hello, on. Hello, sir. Yes, uh, Raymond. Yes, sir. So yeah. Must the logo always be in the SRC folder or you can pick it from anywhere? You or can you can pick, it. pick and drop? You, can, you can't pick and drop. And you can pick it from anywhere. Now, if you pick it from anywhere, what happens is that uh, there's something we are going to look at at the end of the course, how to save your entire work as an executable file. What will happen is that if you pick it from anywhere, let's say the downloads of computer, if you pick it from there and you are making your application an executable file, it can't read it in that way. Because in making okay. your application the executable file, I'm making the entire folder or project folder you created. And if your icon uh, going for it, there's a name for it, it's called assets. If your assets are not inside the project folder you created, when you run the application or when you execute the application, what will happen is that you won't see those images or icons and things show up in the application. So it's always best to have it in the project folder, especially the SRC folder. That's the source folder. At level. All right. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Welcome. So now let's move to the quotes quickly, since that's what we are looking at today. And like I was saying, we write a code. First, we have to disable the sounding part. Okay, we're going to disable it so that when you, just like we saw at the beginning of the lecture, when you run the code, you won't see it. Okay, this part will only pop up if a person wants to create an account. So we are going to create, we are going to create an event inside this create account so that anytime someone clicks this create account, automatically the sounding panel is what made visible. 
Then the other thing to be look at is how we can write the code to select. So whenever I select the region, how should it show in the code that this region has been selected? Okay, so we'll look at that aspect as well. Then finally, finally we we'll look at uh, we we'll look at the browse option. How to browse for maybe an image? Okay, I think we need to edit that label. That's a picture label. So how to browse for an image? We we'll look at that as well. Okay. All right. So. Let's go to our code, which has been generated for us. Okay. And like I said, we are first going to make our sounding panel. We are going to disable the sounding panel. Okay. However, like I said, the sounding panel, which is here, is linked to the create, create account. Okay, so we are going to create the uh, action listener within the create account button. Okay, then we are going to write the code to disable and enable the sounding panel from there. So I'll right click on my create account button, go to create listener, then on create an action listener. Okay. Now my action listener has been created. Okay, so public class author, create account button, but add action listener. Okay, new action listener. Okay. Now, before we execute the action listener, the sounding panel, okay, the sounding panel, which is this, the sounding panel, we need to set the visibility to false. So we are going to say sound panel dot set visibility stop dot set visible and then we put a value there as false okay. so when we do this what is going to happen is that the sound panel will not be visible now that's when you run the application now it will only be visible after we have clicked on the create account so we are now going into the create account take note we brought the set visible false before the create account that means at this point we have not clicked on the create account yet. Okay, so now we come into the create account, which is here, and then we state the action that we want to be performed. Okay, so the action we want to be performed is that we want to set, whenever you click on the create account, the south panel, I'll copy and paste it, this time around, the south panel should be the visible, we set the visible to true. Okay, we set the visible to true. Now I'm going to introduce the main function so that we see how the code will look like when we run it, okay, step by step. So public static void main, and then we introduce our frame. So frame, So J frame, frame equals new J frame. And then this J frame, we are going to give it Comsa. That's the title, Comsa alumni text. Comsa. 
train train dot set um content pin dot set content pin into racket new um what's the name of our app new opsa dot frame panel then frame dot set default close operation and then we see jframe dot exit capital e exit on close and then frame dot pack and then finally frame dot set visible to true so with this, we can now run to see whether our traits, the south panel will be set to false. And then when you then you click on the create account button to see whether the south panel will now be visible. Okay. So we run the code. So this is this is our interface. Okay. After running the code, now you can see that the south part is not showing. The south part is not showing. Why? Because we set a visible to us false. Okay, so the south part isn't showing. Okay. Now when we click on the create account button, okay, the action that has to be performed is to what? To now make the south panel visible. Okay, we set it to true. So now if I click here, the south panel now pops up. Okay, and the value pops up for you to now fill in your details as a new user. I hope that's clear. I hope that's clear. Yes. Sir. Yes. Any, any yes, question? Yes, Prince Asari. The, the action lesson, Nano, the way you did it to me, can you do it again? Because always I've been typing it. Please, this thing, we did it in class, we've done it in class, we did it in class so many times. I'm not going to repeat it. Not going to repeat it. I advise you watch the video again. Okay, okay, okay. There are certain things I'll not repeat because we've done it about, about, about three times now. Okay, okay. All right. Yes, any question? Any other question? Any other question? So I hope the south button, the south panel setting it to false and setting it to true with the action is done. I hope it's well understood. Hello, sir. Yes, Raymond. Hello, sir. Yes. Uh uh, when you created the action listener, uh, like by hiding the the southern part, I realized that the logo extended downwards. So, is there anything that can be done so that the logo will be in its shape, or it will always have to extend? So you can set the size of the logo. Okay. So, for instance, what happened is that the when we created it, it took some part of the interface, uh, the, yeah. some part of the logo. Yeah, so yeah, okay. um, there, there are 
some settings we can do here. For instance, the insects specify the height and the weight, specify the borders, and so on. Okay, those, those settings are there. Now, if you look inside your the handouts, that's page 29. I okay. intentionally omitted a part of the code which comes before the visibility is first true. Now, that part is saying that frame, okay, um, frame dot, frame dot set, um, set size. Frame dot set size. So with this one, you indicate the dimension okay, in terms of the height. Sorry, in terms of, yes, the width and then the height. Okay, so for instance, I want it to be, say, in the handout, we have 600 by 400. Okay, so you can set the dimension, you can set the borders such a way that it doesn't affect the look or even how the application should run. Okay. okay. So even this one is still showing the same way. So we need to set maybe the height in terms of the height. Then let me run it again. Oh, sorry, it's rather the frame, not the frame panel. Okay. It's rather frame. However, I need to have declared the frame earlier. Okay. I'm not trying to follow the handout directly. However, I'm just trying to explain it so that we understand. So public, private static J frame, uh, frame. Hello. So once we declare the frame. So Uh, action to perform. Hello, we did the mother. So, um, exception in trade, AWT, not my exception. Frame dot set size. Strap there, code again. Okay, so this time around, it's not given it. So we specify a size for a frame. So I hope, uh, Raymond, your question has been answered. Yes, yes. All right, okay. So let's go on. So the next thing we want to look at is to, um, Let's look at the browse button. The browse button. Okay. 
the browse button is supposed to give us an image, help us to choose maybe a picture. Okay, help us to choose a picture. It's a way you can do it. This time around, we just want to do it so that the picture will just show, to show us the text or the path where the picture was selected from. Okay, to show us the path where that picture was selected from. So, uh, let me just, Okay, so to write the code for the browse button, we want to create an action listener for the browse button as well. So I right click and then go to create. Right click. Create action is great listener, and then choose action listener. So we have the code for that of the browse button. So inside the browse button, what action do we want to perform? Okay, now to choose an item, okay, to, or to choose an image, Okay, we use what we call the J file chooser. J file chooser, when you want to browse for an image, see that dialog box appear for you to select your image. We use we call what we call the we use what we call the J file chooser. Okay, so J file chooser, select it, and then we give it a name file chooser equals new J file chooser. Sorry. It was new a file chooser. And our file chooser, uh, we'll give it, let's say, um, a return value. So we say int return uh, value equals file chooser to bracket or file chooser does show dialog, uh, show save dialog. So there are so many dialog, open dialog, save dialog, and so on. We choose the save dialog, we set it to. Okay, so it's a save dialog. The only button you see on that dialog box is save. Okay, you save or you close. So that's how come it's a save dialog and the property or the argument is set to now. Now, say that if the return value, okay, we are using return value here because there are times you might not choose uh, an item. Okay? So we are saying that if the return value is equal to a file chooser, dot approve option. Approve option just to mean that that is what you've approved okay, that you are going to choose. Then it should say that what the file selected um, So we say that the file selected, 
selected file equals file chooser dot get selected file. Get selected file. So now we want to display the file that is selected, maybe on the command window. On the command window. Or we can also see uh, show it on the command window, or we can set it into the text area that has been provided. Into the text area that has been provided on the command window. Okay. So this one, let's show it on the command window. So we'll say that system dot out dot print line. And then we say you selected then we concatenate it with file selected. Let's say, sorry, selected file runner. Okay. Dot get name. Okay. So it, this is going to get the name of the file that you selected. Okay. So it's going to get a name. So if the file is inside this to get the name of the file. Or you can also do the get absolute path, which will show you the path name. Yeah. So we can do this, or we can also set it inside the, uh, the text field that we have. So that option is also there, where we can set the string and inside the text field. So we can do that by saying, uh, that's a picture, picture text field dot set text. Say string of uh, string dot value of. You can put a selected file dot get get name. Okay, so this is for the file chooser part. Okay, now these are two options. We are going to look at all those two options and see how they will be reflected. Okay, so now let's run the code and see what we'll get. Okay. So now, We've clicked to create a new user, which is showing. Now what we want to do is to browse. Okay, browse for a picture. Please, I hope you're all with me. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I want yes, sir. to browse for a yes, picture. Okay. So when I click on this, it gives me the save dialog box. This is a save dialog box that we are talking about, this is it. That's what we added to the code here. Okay, a save dialog. Now, if the file we are choosing, okay, is, or if we, if the value of the save dialog box is saved, okay, then you should select the file that we chose and then give us what you have selected and it gives us the file name. Okay, so I have a particular file. I think it's in a music directory. I remember, I think it's in music. Okay, and the file name is blackstar.png. Okay, so blackstar.png. So I'm choosing that file. Uh, maybe let me just show it to you here. So this is the file. 
black star trap. Yes. So selecting that file. Now what do you see? It says what we have selected what black star at PNG. That's line 51. That's the system dot out part. Okay, so he said you you selected and then what? The file selected dot get name. So the name of the file. So you selected black star dot png. Okay. Uh, just a moment. Hello, Mr. Zolo. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the office. And this. All right, so let's continue. Can you all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we all so let's, con let's continue now. Okay, so we've seen how the statement here, system.out.println, is showing us the file, okay, on the console on the command window. Okay. Now, the next one is, so these are two options, okay? So this is what we'll usually see. You see the file name, which is the blackstar.png, show inside an X field we provided in our application. So when I go there, you can see in here what, blackstar.png showing inside the text field. Are we all there? Have you all see it? Yes. 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 Okay, so we can see it inside this particular um, text field. Okay, why? Because we said what the text field, we name it picture TF dot set, set text, okay, into bracket string dot value of string, okay. If you have tried example one, that's page, is it page 26 or 27, 26, okay, you would have come across something like this in that example where you can set text to a particular text field. Okay, we saw that also in the application two and application one. Okay. So that's it for the browse button. Any question? Any question for the browse button? Any question? Browse button, any question? No, sir. No, sir. All right. No, sir. Uh, Edward, your hand is up. No, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah, Edward. Hello. Yes, okay, can thank you. you. Uh, can okay. you please, um, okay, can you please restrict uh, the type of file that you want to take from the ESA? Um, Yes, you can. 
and so on. But our focus here is to uh, just look at how you can get a file. Okay? How you can get a file, but you can restrict the file uh, to choose from the user. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. So for instance, because we said it's an image, and if the person is entering maybe uh, a word file, a word document instead of an image, instead of a PNG or JPEG, you can restrict a person. All right. So I think there's no hand up. Let's move to the next part of what we have to do today. Yes, Prince, your hand is up. Say, I want to ask about the JSON breakdown. J How do you go about it? Because in Secreta, you separate among the string components. Oh, my brother, we are writing to do. Are you taking us back? Hmm. He's going to read on that. Right now, we are on the code. Any question you have should be put on the code. It's a creator. Go and read on it. That's, that's one aspect of your life as a student. I'll give you 20%. The 80% is up to you. I can't feed you everything. All right, so let's move on. Um, so now we want to look at the, uh, yeah, the region. Combo box. Okay, so for instance, if I select one of the items on the combo box, um, there should be a code that will trigger that aspect that we've selected. Okay, that select that will get that item selected. So let's look at that option or that aspect of the code. So similarly, we are going to create an action listener for the combo box. Okay, so our region combo box, we right click on it and then select an action listener, okay. action to be performed. Now we have our region CB, which is our region combo box. What action do we want to perform? Now we want it to identify the item that we have selected. Okay, so just like the region, when we selected an item, we show that, oh, we have selected blackstar.png. Similarly, when we select a region, we should identify the region that we have selected, okay, or the item that we selected. So the items there are in the form of a string, in the form of a string. So we say string, select region, uh, select region or selected region, selected region equals region, region CV get selected item. Okay, and then we set it to string. We set to string. Okay. The whatever item we have, we want to display is just like we've done here and say that, oh, uh, you selected so and so, okay, or you selected data character or something. So I just copy and paste the same thing here, but I'll edit this. Instead of selected files, change it to selected region. So it will say that you selected so, so, and so, Ashanti. So maybe, let me concatenate it and say selected maybe so so and so region, anti region. So that is it for the region part. The keyword here is get selected item. 
get selected item because whatever we put in the model for the region items, so we get selected item. Okay. Now I can run my code and the application. Click on the create new user, enter name, go to region, okay, and then maybe I select Greater Accra. So you can see here from the command window, you selected Greater Accra region. We are here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Any question? Any question on the region part? So I believe that's very simple to play around with. So the next thing we want to look at is, or the last thing we want to look at is a submit button. Now, in this case, when we create a submit button, all that we do is that let's, when we click on it, it should exit the application. Okay, that's all you want to do with the submit button. When you click on it, it should exit the application. Now, take note, this application is not storing anything because we've not created a database for it. Okay, the database is the last part. Uh, is the next thing we will look at after the mid semester exams next week. We we'll look at the database part. Okay. So take note of that. Um, next week we'll be having our mid semester exam. Like I said, at all level, uh, I'll share a list of names in terms of badges. So when the list comes out, please take note of the badge in which you fall in and your time. Like I said, you'll be writing the mid in badges. So if your badge is seven o'clock, you come at seven o'clock and you come and take your, the mid -sem. Okay, I'll just bring a cool program for you to write. And every badge has their own set of questions together with the part-timers. Please take notes. I'm looking at coming up with five, four or five badges. Okay, so every badge will have a set of questions. So please start practicing the codes, especially uh, from application one all the way to application four, which is the calculator. I've told you to go and try your hands on it. Okay, so please start practicing it the application for the calculator, the code might look plenty, but it's very simple, okay? Most of them are being repeated. So the code are being repeated, okay? So let me just finish, let's finish this quickly. So I'll go through the um, application, the calculator application with you. You look at the code shortly, and then you try your hands on them as you prepare for them. So now let's look at the submit button. So we'll create an action listener right click, create an action listener, and then, so over here, we just want the submit button to close. Like I said, there's no database parts to this application, okay? So all that we are doing is to execute some commands. When we start looking at database, you see how we can right, put a database behind our application, store everything that will be entered. Okay, so 
over here we are looking at the um, the submit button exiting the application. Okay, so we just put the um, Well, instead of even creating the action list now, we can just put the exit or system dot exit. Okay. System dot exit status zero. Okay. That means that anytime we click on the submit button, it should exit our application. Okay, so we run it again for the last time. And then we look at all the things we have implemented. So first and foremost, we disable the south button or the south panel so that when you create, click on create member, it will activate. Okay. So over here, we have the full name, enter the full name. Okay. Then we came to look at the browse, how to browse for a picture. So it gives you the save dialog box. And the save dialog box locates the image we are looking for. Whichever image you are looking for. Like I said, you can restrict this. Okay, by default, everything is what all files. So you can restrict this to maybe only images. So let me locate picture of music. I think I selected a black star. Okay, so it's been selected. Then we come to region. I select. Greater Accra region, Greater Accra region selected, and then the submit. So if you are giving it a database, all this would have been in the database. Okay. So we would have been entering a username, logging in, and then reading it from the database. Okay. So we'll look at that in our subsequent meeting. And once we are done here, just click on submit and we said submit will do what close or exit the application okay which has done so any question any question no no all right so let me open a sample of the application uh, the calculator application Hello. Um, yes, sir. Yes, uh, is it uh, Godman? Your hand is up. 
Yes, sir. So good evening. Good evening. Uh, please, with regards to the browse uh, button, can we add a preview feature to it so that the selected image can actually be displayed before confirming the selection? Okay, a preview. Yeah, it's, yes. it's possible. But similarly okay. to the way the save is, you can enlarge the size to see the image. Okay. You know, Windows has that option where you can see the image even before you select it. Okay, sir. Yeah, so that option is there. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. I, if you want to see the image on the 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 the, the, the interface or the the the, the form, if you want to see the image on the form. Then instead of using a text field, you can use um, a label okay, okay. so that the label will display the image. But okay. all those ones, so you need to set the size of the label so that the image will fit directly into the size that has been specified. OK, sir. Yeah. That's where I was having uh, some. So thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. These are things that you should try on your own. Be innovative. Um, All right, so this is the calculator application. Let me run it so that so this is the application, a standard calculator, like I said. There is a text field, the bigger one, which is taking the values that you enter, divide, and then equal to gives you your answer. Okay. Multiply by zero gives you zero. So you see, there's a back arrow, okay, and so on. Then over here is a radio button, the okay, two of them on and off. So if you click on the off, it disable all the buttons that you've added, including your text field. Okay, so I click it, I can't do anything. Even the off button is disabled. Okay. However, when I click on on, everything is what enabled. Okay. Now, how is that achieved? As the interface is created. Okay, text field, buttons, and then we use the main layout is a grid layout. Grid layout, so in the form of a grid. And we have the title, we have the text, the radio button, okay, and the other buttons. Now, when we come to the code, these are all generated. Then we use a string, which is for the open, then a double for answer. So the answer is what to display in the text field. Now, the first part has to do with the radio button. So the on radio button is set to true. Okay, set to true. Or true is selected. Once it's selected, everything here has to do with the true. So that's why you do all your computation and all that. Clear everything. Okay. Now, this part 
it's saying radio on button set to false. Okay, now if it is false, everything here is what set enable true. However, if it is set to uh, the own button, okay. Now let me look at it very well. It's radio on. Now, if you disable it, the disable function you set everything to false. Okay. Now these two functions are in here located quickly. The enable and All right, so let me just take it from the top. So we create an action listener for all the button. So we have the answer text field. The answer text field will take test. So if you enter zero, the answer text field will take zero. If you enter one, it will take the text one, two, okay, and so on. Then three, all the way to all the buttons we've had. Now here, it's looking at the various operations. So as operator will perform the operation addition. Now addition will be set to the value, okay, add. Then we do that for subtraction, multiplication, division. Okay. And this part is for the items part. So this is the radio on and off. This is the part I was looking for. So the radio on and off, the add item listener. If you took, take the enable, it means it will enable the radio. That's when the radio is off. If you set to disable, it will disable the radio. Sorry, it will disable the calculator. Okay, so the radio, on radio button, if you enable it, it will turn it on. If you disable it, it will turn it off. Now the disable and enable code are here. So this is the enable. So you realize that everything is being set to true, 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 true. But the radio is set to false. And so you click on it, then it will be set to true. Then if you come to the disable, here all the other buttons have been set to work false. Okay, that's the disable part. So those functions have been called in. And there's the backspace. The backspace will move one character out. Okay, so that's the code for it. The clear button will clear everything from the history. So to clear everything, you can see that a certain text, but there's nothing in there. It's just the double code to clear everything, then equal to, so it will perform the operation. Okay, so the operation to the functions have been written for the arithmetic operation. Okay, so let's look at the function for arithmetic operation. So here it's using the switch case. So if the switch operand selected, if the case is addition, then to pick whatever item you selected using the uh, arrays, okay. And then take the left part, the right part, and then perform what the addition 
on them and then give you the answer, assess the answer to the answer text. Then it does the same thing. If the case is abstraction, it means the same thing. However, it just changes the symbol for subtraction, the minus. That's the same for multiplication, division. And then the default is set to blank. Okay, so that's the fault for the calculator. Um, please try it out. Try it out. If you have any issue, you can see me. Or you can see it. Okay. All right, so um, I think we'll end it here for today. I wish you all the best in the upcoming main semester exams. Uh, I don't want to surprise you because I told you to try a lot of things. So if you are faithful to yourself and try them all, I believe you'll be okay during the mid semester exams. I've been telling you for the past three weeks or a month now that. The mid semester exams is going to be practical. So um, I'll make this video available, share the link with you so that you can.